Welcome. This uh, video will be about double sideband transmitters and uh, how I built one. It all started when I read some old magazine articles on the topic. Uh, I got inspired to build one myself with the idea to keep it as simple as possible. In other words, I was uh, trying to avoid transformers, split uh, stator capacitors and such, so that anyone could build it uh, using mostly, you know, readily available parts, tube sockets and valves and so. Let's have a look at the schematic. So, on the right we have a triode section acting as a microphone preamp. Uh, the next triode is uh, set up as a phase splitter. Uh, next up is two triodes in push-pull, feeding audio to the control grids of the 6v6s. So uh, my original plan was not to use any interstage transformers out of simplicity and uh, couple the audio straight from the plates of the push-pull pair uh, to the screen grids of the 6L6s. And while that did work, the power output was only a couple of milliwatts because of the low voltage to wing present and uh, because the 6s and 7s could not provide enough current to the screens of the finals. So I had to get back to the drawing board and I added the 6v6s. I set them up as cathode followers with the hope that they would add some more current into the mix. Uh, the, sign, the design I used I stole that from an old Altec Lansing 50, uh, 1570B amplifier which has cathode followers that works into a center tap choke driving a pair of 811s uh, so I tried driving the 606 uh, screens from the cathode choke connection and that gave more power output, about 3 watts but uh, we were only getting about 195 volts peak to peak as compared to 54 volts with the 6s and 7s so it was quite an improvement but not enough had I used other tubes perhaps sweep tubes 61 4 to 6s uh, we have a euro a line output pentode PL36 I think they would have responded much better in this circuit but uh, this wa was what I had so this is what I had to work with so I found an old transformer which had about 1 to 2 step out ratio with center taps on both the primary and secondary and uh, the 6 v 6 cathode followers they were able to drive that transformer without any issues providing about 450 volts peak to peak and which gave me the wanted 20 watts uh, output power so if you plan on building something like this you know, don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, the cathode followers, they're quite forgiving in terms of load impedance, so you could probably get away with driving an you know, old uh, speaker transformer, perhaps a main transformer connecting backwards. Two transformers in series, you know, just try whatever you, whatever you have. Perhaps uh, make an artificial center tap, if you don't have a center tap, uh, primary or secondary. Yeah, moving on. Uh, 687, it's uh, set up as a buffer amplifier to amplify the signal from my DDS VFO. Uh, you could also set it up uh, as a crystal oscillator if you happen to have a phone portion crystal. And uh, the finals, well, the only critical part in this transmitter is the uh, phase inverter driving the control grids of the finals. The phase must be equal and they must be exactly 180 degrees out of phase. So I made a transformer on a BN73202 binocular uh, core and I wound a center tapped secondary. So, and the, the final, the tank coil. Well, as you can see, I settled for a conventional Pi net output. Now, let's uh, have a look at the components on the transmitter. Beginning from this end, we have the 687. Here's the tank coil. Yeah, here's the 
tank coil. These are the 6L6s, finals. These are the 6V6s, the cathode followers. And these are the 6SM7s, the twin triodes. On the front we have the plate tuning capacitor and the microphone jack. I have a fixed uh, antenna capacitor in the back of the transmitter. So I sell it for a value that gave me a good power output. Alright, on the back we have oh come on. We have the antenna jack, the receiver output, and the power the power input. Okay, so and on this side is uh, an RCA jack for the VFO input. And here is a trimmer capacitor to tune the tank circuit of the 6AG7. Looking underneath, it is uh, <laughs> quite a mess. You know, I built this on the fly, testing out one section of the transmitter, then moving on to the next one, and so on and so on. So, well, it's not that good looking. If I were to do it all again, I would probably it would probably look a lot better, and I would probably add an onboard VFO, a balance control, and perhaps band switching to cover, you know, 20, 20 meters. I think that would be fun to use in 20 meters. Sugar Alpha 2, Charlie, Lima, Charlie. Florida 6, Florida, Quebec, hello, Jean-Gotte. Almet Andrew, Okay, so how does this work? Well, this is a balanced modulator, and as the name implies, it relies on balance. Uh, we're feeding the RF to the finals in push-pull, and uh, the output gets cancelled because of that. The carrier gets cancelled because of that. And when we apply modulation to the screens, this um, balance gets disrupted and letting the sidebands appear at the output of the transmitter. Of course, there's some carrier leakage, which is to be expected from a simple circuit like this. However, this could be improved by installing a potentiometer in the grid leaks to tune the amplitude. You could also add uh, like a split stator capacitor also on the control grids to be able to tune the face even though I didn't I don't have any stuff like that on this transmitter it's uh, it's still performing quite good I cannot demodulate speech from this transmitter using an, using the BC348 in with the BFO turned off neither can my K3 uh, demodulate speech from this in AM mode uh, the stations I've talked to on air, no one can detect any carrier. So I would say that for a low power device like this, this is like 20 watt uh, output. I think I think we're good, you know, with that small amount of carrier that gets through. For more information on uh, this subject, I recommend you to check out uh the article named active ssb modulators uh you can find that in 73 magazine july 1963 uh, that article describes almost all types of double sideband modulators and uh, also theories on it so and also i think most radio handbooks from the you know mid 50s to mid 60s have information on circuits like this so in the meantime, good luck with your build.
Thank you for watching and see you in another video. 7-3.